Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is the recently unveiled Quahair 313 jet drone by Iran, presented a few days ago in the form of somewhat crude subscale mock-ups, a move that has sparked significant controversy across the internet and beyond. The purpose of this video is to examine whether the unveiling of the Qahir drone is merely a propaganda stunt aimed at the Iranian public, or if there is more to this project than meets the eye. The Qahir drone is based on the Qahir F-313 manned strike aircraft concept, which Iran first revealed in 2013, 12 years ago. The unconventional appearance and crude mock-up presented by Iran at that time led experts to question whether this was simply a sophisticated propaganda effort to bolster the public image of then-President Ahmadinejad, or if the project held deeper significance. It's important to clarify that the Quahair F-313 was never marketed as a fifth-generation stealth fighter. This was evident from the 2013 mock-up, which depicted a subsonic aircraft with thick wing geometry and a non-afterburning engine. The aircraft's size also raised questions, as it appeared too small to comfortably accommodate a pilot. However, this could be explained by its intended role as a technology demonstrator. Aviation history includes examples of such subscale demonstrators, such as the Boeing Bird of Prey, which was also a subscale tech demonstrator. If the Quahair F-313 wasn't meant to be a fifth-generation fighter, what else could it represent? A relevant comparison here is the US F-117 Nighthawk Stealth Bomber, which was also a subsonic aircraft designed for strike missions and optimized for the highest level of stealth and low observability technically achievable at its time. When the Qahair F-313 was unveiled in 2013, Iran had captured the Lockheed RQ-170 Sentinel just around a year earlier. The technologies gained from that capture could have been intentionally showcased through the Qahair. Radar-absorbing materials, structural designs, and manufacturing techniques for low-cost, low-observable aircraft, areas in which Lockheed Skunk Works had decades of expertise, could now be demonstrated in a more conventional strike fighter design compared to the difficult flying wing RQ-170. The single-engine configuration of the early mock-up may have also been intended to signal that Iran intends to reverse-engineer the FJ-33 turbofan engine from the captured RQ-170, greatly boosting the country's aerospace industry. At the time, it was unclear to experts whether the Quahair was real or a propaganda tool aimed at both the Iranian public and U.S. analysts. In the propaganda scenario, the intention would be to showcase the implications of losing the RQ-170 and its advanced airframe and engine technologies. This question was partially answered four years later, in 2017, when a larger and more sophisticated mock-up made for taxiing trails was revealed. The first indication that the project was more serious than some had initially believed was visible only to experts. The advanced landing gear design of the 2017 mock-up. The complexity and effort required to design and produce such landing gear would not make sense for a mere propaganda project. Additionally, the larger 2017 version of the Quahair featured a twin-engine layout, suggesting it was a ground-testing prototype rather than just a technology demonstrator like the 2013 model. Interestingly, the 2017 Quahair retained the general aerodynamic design of the earlier version, including unusual features such as top-mounted intakes. These intakes only make good sense if the aircraft's role was limited to strike missions, similar to the RQ-170 and F-117, which also feature top intakes. The aircraft remained a subsonic design, and its large canards and short wings, cranked downwards at the ends, suggested that its primary flight regime was intended to be low-altitude flight utilizing ground effect. This would also explain the top-mounted intakes, as they would avoid the ingestion of seawater. This more detailed Quahair also incorporated faceted surface stealth design, reminiscent of the F-117, a design many consider outdated compared to the curved stealth shaping seen in newer platforms like the F-22 and F-35. So, what could a subsonic strike aircraft, primarily designed for low-altitude sea-skimming flight with an outdated faceted stealth design, signify? The simplest explanation, exotic looks for propaganda purposes, doesn't hold up when viewed in a broader context. 
Iran's IRGC Navy has developed dozens of fast attack craft and speedboat designs over the past three decades, building and maintaining a vast fleet. So, given the significant resources invested in anti-shipping capabilities, would it make sense to develop an entirely new aircraft for this specific role? Surprisingly, the answer could be yes. It makes strategic sense for the IRGC Navy to request such a specialized aircraft from Iran's aerospace industry. The anti-shipping capabilities provided by a strike aircraft like the Kahir would offer significant qualitative advantages for the IRGC Navy. A sea-skimming flight profile at very low altitudes over long ranges creates substantial detection challenges. When combined with the line-of-sight limitation caused by the Earth's curvature and the low observable stealth features of a small aircraft, detecting such an aircraft becomes extremely difficult. Many are unaware that while the F-117 has been retired from active service with the U.S. Air Force, it continues to fly in roles such as radar cross-section testing and aggressor training due to its still unmatched stealth capabilities. This is largely due to the aircraft's maximalist approach to low observability and its faceted stealth design, which the Kahar also employs to some extent. A small stealthy aircraft flying at around 10 meters above the ocean's surface, utilizing the radar clutter created by waves, would be exceptionally difficult to detect until it appears over the horizon. At that point, it could deploy an anti-ship standoff weapon and return to base. Iran has replicated the FJ-33 turbofan engines from the RQ-170 through its Jahesh 700 program. These highly efficient, high thrust-to-weight ratio turbofans could power the twin-engine Quahar. The inherent efficiency of turbofans at low altitudes, combined with the ground effect benefits of the Kahir's aerodynamic design, could provide the aircraft with a comparatively long combat range in the sea skimming flight regime. A prime example of a high performance anti ship weapon that would have a similar mission profile to the Quahir concept are the Russian Kaliber and Chinese YJ 18 subsonic, supersonic hybrid cruise missiles. These weapons fly at subsonic speeds using their mini turbofan engines toward the target, autonomously detect it, and then launch a solid propellant kill stage once they are approximately 30 kilometers away from the targeted vessel. This kill stage accelerates to around Mach 3 and is relatively compact in size. The reported ranges of these missiles are between 600 and 800 kilometers, making them one of the most formidable low-flying missile threats to Western navies. In this context, it becomes clear that the Kahir could perform a similar mission, but with the added capability of returning to base after launching a standoff anti-ship missile. The strike radius provided by its turbofan engines, combined with the ground effect, could potentially exceed that of the Kaliber and YJ-18 missiles, reaching up to 1,000 kilometers or more. While such a niche role might seem far-fetched, the importance of long-range anti-shipping capabilities is critical for Iran given its naval-centric adversaries. However, advancements in autonomous flight technology and the relatively straightforward strike mission profile of the Kahir mean that it doesn't necessarily need to be a manned platform. In 2025, after years of speculation, it was revealed that the Kahir F-313 had been transformed into a drone. The most significant challenge for such a subsonic jet drone is the autonomous identification of the correct target vessel and the determination of the optimal attack profile. Recent advances in artificial intelligence, image recognition techniques, and extensive databases for sensor data comparison have made it possible to eliminate the need for a pilot, enabling the unmanned drone approach. The Kahir drone can fly to a pre-programmed target area, use its radar for detection and identification of the target, and plan an effective attack route to maximize mission success. Since the Kahir drone is not limited to ground effect flight profile but is also a subsonic aircraft, it can ascend to higher altitudes for scanning the sea and even loiter over threat areas for extended periods to locate and identify hostile vessels. Its AI-enhanced autopilot could also allow it to retreat upon detecting radar emissions that indicate an incoming threat. It could then descend to low sea skimming altitudes and return to its home base. Fully autonomous operation is not its only potential mode of operation, however. A high-altitude relay drone, operating between the Quahir and its ground operator, could establish a directional communication link, enabling a man-in-the-loop function. In this scenario, a human operator would select targets for attack or verify the accuracy of the drone's target identification. 
The effectiveness of the Quahair drone as an anti-shipping asset depends on its combat radius and the standoff weapon it employs. Similar to the Caliber and YJ-18 kill stages, a supersonic solid propellant missile would be the most straightforward choice. Given Iran's advanced missile technologies, which include carbon fiber motor casings and flexible nozzles. A range of 30 to 40 kilometers is entirely sufficient for such a weapon, as this distance represents the radar horizon within which the Quahair drone can approach below line of sight. If such a weapon reaches speeds of Mach 2 to 3, its lethality against even the most advanced and well-protected naval vessels would be exceptionally high. The landing gear layout of the Kahair drone suggests that it likely features a sufficiently large central weapon bay potentially capable of housing such a short-range supersonic anti-ship missile. During its unveiling in February 2025, a small 20% scale mock-up of the Kahair was also displayed, which drew ridicule from some observers. However, the purpose of this scaled-down model must be understood in the context of the simultaneously unveiled Shahed Bagheri drone carrier. This new carrier is being tested with the 20% scale remote-controlled aircraft to develop a robust automatic takeoff and landing system for the full-scale Quahair drone. Optical sensors, likely utilizing shape recognition, are employed to determine the drone's 3D angles during approach and relay correction commands to the 20% scale test drone. Given the high likelihood of failures during such testing, using a low-cost 20% scale model, is a low-risk and technically very practical approach to qualify the automatic takeoff and landing system for the full-scale Quahair drone. Additionally, 60% scale mock-ups or prototypes of the Quahair were also present, some of which appeared to be used for handling and training simulations. It is likely that flight-rated 60% scale drones will be tested in the near future to further qualify the system for carrier operations. The 60% scale variant may also be operationally deployed capable to use tactical missiles like the Almaz-3. Once the risk reduction testing programs are completed and the full-scale Quahair drone and its engines fully developed, it is expected to enter operational service on the drone carrier. While the primary mission of the Quahair drone in the IRGC Navy is believed to be high-end sea-skimming anti-shipping operations with a Mach 3 weapon, it can also perform standard jet drone missions such as medium-altitude strikes using comparatively heavy guided bombs. Although the Kaher's aerodynamic design is not optimized for such missions, it would still perform reasonably well, making it a versatile strike platform for IRGC Navy carrier operations. Dismissing the Kaher as a fake fifth-generation fighter is unjust, as it was never intended to fulfill such a role. Like the F-117, it is a strike aircraft designed without the need for supersonic flight capabilities or the associated aerodynamic heating challenges. This greatly simplifies the radar-absorbing structures and the quality grade necessary. It is envisioned as a low-cost asset, utilizing cost-effective, low-observable stealth airframe production techniques with the lower lifetime required for unmanned systems. This airframe technology is possibly even comparable to the composite radar-absorbing airframe of the famous Shahed-136 one-way attack drone, or more advanced methods similar to those used in the captured US RQ-170. The faceted stealth airframe shape may also be due to easier producibility to deploy higher quantities. Iran's different RQ-170 variants also started as crude subscale prototypes and reached mature products like the Shahed-197. The choice of two small engines also indicates that Iran is leveraging locally produced technologies, such as the Jahesh 700 turbofans or the J90, a copy of the USJ85 engine. The confidence with which these developmental steps of the Kahair project have been presented suggests that it will ultimately result in a credible and efficient asset once its development is fully realized. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.